All right, guys, permanent buffing items, red edition. I know it's been a little while since my last video, but I just haven't found the time and energy to work on content very much. It's kind of just what school does to you, you know? College life lifted its shoe and found me on the soul and was like, hmm, nah, screw this guy, and ground me into the dirt. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at all of the items that give you permanent boosts in the Calamity mod. This was requested a couple of times in the comments of the last permanent buff video, and considering how that one performed, damn right, I'm gonna do another one. There aren't actually many different effects to cover with these items, which I'll elaborate on in a moment, so this probably won't be that long of a video, and we're just gonna get right into it because there's an English assignment looming over my shoulder that I've gotta get working on pretty soon. I should probably get as much of a head start on it as I can because trying to find meaning in important pieces of literature is a real pain in the ass. A month into the school year and seeing the word metaphor is already making my eyes glaze over, and trying to find an example of hyperbole is about as painful as individually pulling out every single one of my notes hairs. First up, health buffs. There are four items added by the Calamity mod that increase your maximum HP, which are all basically upgrades to the life fruit. Each of these items are crafted with materials that you get at various stages of the game, many of which are added in Calamity and follow the boss progression in the mod. First place, uh, I mean, first up, wait, I already said that. First fruit is the blood orange. You can make this item after you've defeated all of the mechanical bosses. It requires five souls from all of the mechs, five life fruit, an orange blood root and 10 blood orbs, which are crafting materials that drop from enemies during a blood moon. It's a single use consumable item that permanently increases your HP by 25 when used and changes the color of your hearts to a fiery orange red. This effect is shared with the other three items on this botanical ladder of dangerous looking plants. And the next rung up, we have the miracle fruit. For this one, you need, again, five life fruits, a teal mushroom, five trapper bulbs, which are rare drops from angry trappers, five life alloy, which themselves are crafted from a combination combination of three different bars, and ten living shards, which are dropped from Plantera. Next, we have the Elderberry, which is the first item that we obtain after base game progression has ended. You need five life fruits, blueberries, so that we may continue dyeing our vital organs various colors, ten Eulabloom bars, which you can make from a new ore that you find in the jungle after defeating Providence, ten Divine Geos, which are obtained directly by defeating Providence, and twenty Unholy Essence, which you can get from these three monsters or by defeating Providence. Finally, the dragon fruit. Five life fruit, a sky blue flower, 15 solar fragments, Yeron soul fragments, which are dropped by the jungle dragon Yeron, obviously, and one ascendant spirit essence, which you can create with four other crafting materials from the dungeon and events, most only obtainable after you've killed the devourer of gods. We consume this final fruit and end up with a total of 600 maximum HP right before challenging the Exomex and Escal, but we're not quite ready yet. What if you're playing a mage? You think that 200 mana is gonna cut it against Supreme Calamitas, mana buffs. Of course, if we're going so far beyond Moonlord that we need another extra 100 HP by the end of the game, we're gonna need some more mana too. The first item of this category is more of an interesting alternative rather than an actual buff stacking on top of what Vanilla Terraria has to offer. The Enchanted Starfish acts the exact same as a normal mana crystal, increasing your mana by 20 up until 200. You get this item by fishing, a favorite pastime of mine, and it has a 10% chance to be reeled in on the surface during the night. While the blue starfish is kind of cute, we have three more important actual mana buffs, all of which add 50 permanent mana to your character. The first one is the Comet Shard, which you can make as soon as you get into hard mode. To craft it, you need 10 meteorite bars, 20 fallen stars, and 150 stardust, which is dropped from enemies that spawn in the astral infection biome, which spawns upon defeating the wall of flesh. Honestly, there isn't anything more terraria than a pink meteor crashing into an inconvenient place in my world and spawning dangerous enemies for me to deal with. Thanks, Calamity. I love it. The Ethereal Core has a similar crafting recipe to the Comet Shard, also requiring meteorite bars and fallen stars, just in larger quantities, while also needing 20 Nebula Fragments and 25 Astral Bars, which are crafted from Stardust and Astral Ore, which generates along with the Astral Infection, but can only be mined after you defeat Astrum Deus. The last mana upgrade is a long stretch away from the previous one, and is called the Phantom Heart, which is crafted with 100 Phantoplasm, the crafting material that you get from certain monsters in the dungeon after defeating Moonlord, and 10 Ruinous Souls, which are dropped by Poltergast. With our extra 150 mana in pocket, let's move on to the items that permanently buff Rage Mode and Adrenaline Mode, the two special mechanics in the Calamity mod which were added as a way to compensate for the added difficulty of the Revengeance and Death modes. There's three permanent buff
buffing items for each mechanic, which we'll go through pretty quickly here since all of them have the same effect for their respective mechanic and they're all tied to defeating bosses. For context, Rage and Adrenaline are chargeable abilities that give you large damage boosts for certain periods of time when activated. Rage charges constantly while near enemies and Adrenaline charges while you aren't taking damage during boss fights. And the Adrenaline bar will reset if you get hurt and have the damage of the hit that caused it to reset. The three Rage Mode buffs each increase the duration of Rage Mode by one second, so once you have all of them, when you activate the ability, it will last for 12 seconds. The first item with such a buff is the Mushroom Plasma Root, which drops from our friendly neighborhood Fungus Crab. The second is... Infernal Blood. Yummy. You get this from Cooler Golem just before fighting Moon Lord. And then finally, the Red Lightning Container, which you get by defeating the Dragon Folly just after Moon Lord. The items for Adrenaline Mode increase the damage of the ability by 15% each and get you up to a 245% total damage boost when you use it. Additionally, each one also gives you a 5% damage reduction, which I believe applies to the damage having effect when you get hit with the bar fully charged. The first Adrenaline buff is the Electrolyte Gel Pack from Slime God. The second is the Starlight Fuel Cell, which is dropped by Astrum Arius. And the last is the Ecto Heart, dropped by Poltergast. And there's not much else to say about them. Those. Simple. We've just about reached the end of the list of permanent buffs in this mod. We just have two more, one of which actually might be the best out of all of the items mentioned so far, and it is not the Hermit's Box of 100 Medicines, but this one is also very nice. Dropped by the Wall of Flesh, the Hermit's Box is the single non-consumable permanent buff in the mod, and it permanently makes the player spawn with full health. And just God bless whoever came up with the idea for this item. Spawning with half HP is my biggest pet peeve about this game, and this is actually the best quality of life item ever made. Our very last item is the Celestial Onion. As you might expect of an item dropped from Moon Lord, it's a good one. It's also a very fitting item for when you get it, because after defeating Moon Lord is where I feel the craziness of the Calamity mod really gets going. And just like with the crazy shift from pre-hard mode to hard mode after beating the Wall of Flesh, the transition from Moon Lord and into the rest of Calamity is softened just a little bit with the help of an extra accessory slot. With that, I'm gonna wrap it up. That is every single permanent boost that you can currently get in the Calamity mod. I'll probably be making more Calamity stuff in the near future, whenever that is. So if you have suggestions on things for me to cover, leave them in the comments. Last thing I've got to do is give my subscribers a huge thank you. We hit 5,000 subs the other week, which is absolutely wild. Let's keep pushing forward, boys and girls. The Big Ten is up next. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.